Well, right now, I am in France, and over the past few episodes, we've been looking at the Battle of Verdun. Battle of Verdun was going to kick off on the 21st of February, 1916, in something that the Germans called Operation Judgment. Now, in Falkenhayn's original plan, the, the German 5th Army, under the leadership of Crown Prince Wilhelm III, was going to advance along what was called the right bank, or the eastern bank, of the Meuse River. The, the left bank was going to be completely ignored. Now, Crown Prince uh, Wilhelm III and his staff protested this because there's high ground over here. And they said that as German troops advanced towards Verdun on the right bank, they would be subject to flanking fire from the left bank. Falkenhayn kind of brushed it off, but within the first few weeks, things were bogging down over on the right bank of the Meuse, and it turns out that uh, the French had some guns that could reach them from over in this direction. So the decision was made to send some German troops over here to this side of the river to deal with the French on some of the high ground. One of the hills that the Germans would have to take over on the left bank had a very ominous nickname to it. In French, it's Mort Homme, but in English, it translates to the dead man. So again, I'm standing on the left bank of the Meuse River, and for anyone who's a you know native French speaker, I, I realize that it's painful to listen to me say French words, but anyway, I'm doing my best. But over here is, is the right bank. So again, you have the, the Germans that are advancing down this way from north to south, and they're getting flanking fire from the high ground that is over here. Now, for the Germans, they've got to cross this river, and then they've got all of this open ground that they have to get across. So a lot of their uh, movement in preparation for this was happening at night, uh, and then they're going to have to like move into towns and villages and move into the woods quickly to try and assault these hills. I've moved in just a little bit from the river, and the, the fighting that takes place over here on the left bank starts in early March of 1916, and it just becomes an attritional slog over here. Uh, the Germans aren't able to advance, the, the French uh, aren't giving way, and all throughout March, all throughout April and through most of May, there is not much progress over here and there is a whole lot of death. So the Germans, uh, their answer to this is the same answer that they have to a lot of the issues in the First World War. And uh, that is heavy artillery and more of it. And positions like this one right here just absolutely got pulverized. This is the former site or the, well, the site of uh, what used to be the village of uh, Cumier, or Cumiers, 
I, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, but uh, the French had positioned themselves here in this village, and it absolutely got pounded by the uh, German heavy artillery. Uh, the regiment that was holding the position here in late May was the 254th. So you, here you can see, uh, it says, to the heroes of the 254th Regiment of Infantry uh, from the 16th to the 23rd of May, 1916. Uh, the 254th that was holding the line here in this village got decimated. Uh, after this was over, their regiment got disbanded and their men scattered out to other regiments because there simply just wasn't enough of them left. And as for the village itself, it never recovered. Uh, there was nothing really to come back to and rebuilding in a lot of these villages was too dangerous because of all of the unexploded ordnance. And this became one of the villages that died for France. I just happened to see this plaque over here on the wall. Uh, it says, uh, mobilized as a Lieutenant Colonel 1939, Rene uh, Lisbon, who commanded the 5th Battalion of the 254th Regiment of Infantry, May 1916. Um, he died on July 28, 1943, executed at Struthof. Um, he had been deported for resistance actions. Interesting. Yeah, so one of the guys, one of the French guys who fought here uh, would go on to be part of the resistance in World War II. Looks like he was sent to a camp and executed. Hmm. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on up to, uh, to Dead Man's Hill. Right, we just got up here on Mort Om, and uh, I, I should mention we're, we're not going to be able to go today. Uh, but just to the east of here, there's another hill called Hill 304 that the Germans were also trying to take because you can't take this hill without taking that one, or else you'll be flanked from Hill 304. So, uh, starting in early March, again, the Germans are trying to advance on these hills, and it is just an absolute slow grind. Uh, they try to advance and can't answer with more artillery. Try and advance more artillery. Try and advance more artillery. And it is just an absolute uh, slugfest. Kind of like two heavyweight boxers that are just both worn out, but they keep, you know, throwing these haymakers when they can muster it up. And, and walking up here on the hilltop, you can see the evidence of just what happened here uh, during those months in 1916. The, the right bank gets most of the attention, but man, there was some heavy fighting that happened over here on the left. I don't know how well it's translating on camera right now, but man, this whole hilltop uh, looks like the surface of a golf ball. Uh, there are just divots and shell craters and evidence of battle everywhere so again as bad as it was for the germans who were trying to get up here uh, imagine being one of these french soldiers and being on the receiving end of all of this punishment it just had to be maddening uh, combined there are ten thousand german and french soldiers who are going to lose their lives up here on this hill We're emerging from the woods here, and up here on the, the summit of Mort Om, they have this monument, and 
We, we've seen a lot of monuments in this Verdun series. This one might be my favorite. We were looking at uh, death shrouded and, and holding this flag. And this sculpture is, is dark and defiant. And, and, and really, to me, just stands out among all of the others here. And uh, there's an inscription down there below the sculpture that says they did not pass, echoing the words of General Nivelle, uh, who said those words, you know, saying they shall not pass or they will not pass. And then uh, down below it says to the dead of the 69th Division. Now, the Germans would eventually take Mort Ulm and Hill 304, but the cost would be high. In nearly four months, they advanced four kilometers, and in that space sustained 69,000 casualties. And, and walking up here, you, you have to wonder how much metal is under our feet right now. Uh, just. Just insane to, to think about what happened up here on these hills. Uh, now, they would hold the hills throughout the summer, and on August 20th, the French would launch a counteroffensive, and they would take it back. But, but right here, this is as far as the Germans got. On Mort Ulm, they did not pass. <laughs> 